This podcast is part of the Gunna Geek Network. The opinions expressed may not represent other podcasts or affiliates of Gunna Geek. Check out more podcasts at GunnaGeek.com and get ready because geekiness starts in 3, 2, 1. You have been granted clearance level 10. Stand by for shield the briefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents of equal or higher security clearance. And now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast number 45, covering the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode, season 2, episode 3, Making Friends and Influencing People. This podcast is recorded on Thursday, October 9th, 2014. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the ABC television show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the general Marvel Universe. Because of the hypoxia. (laughs) (laughs) We love to include feedback from our listeners, and you can find all of our contact information on our website at legendsofshield.com. You can call in for our voicemail line at 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-2871. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr by searching Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. And we also have forums available at forums.gunnageek.com or by searching for Gunna Geek on the Tapper Talk app. That was excellently done in the middle of the lack of oxygen, Haley. Well done. Well done. You're welcome. I have like a third lung. <laughs> what superpower is that? That's not Aquaman, right? No, that's having a third lung. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's more of a genetic anomaly than a superpower. So, our consultant, Wing, took me aside this past week, and he said, Hey, Stargate Pioneer, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. turned one on September 28th. I was like, oh, okay, so yay, we're one years old. (laughs) Yay, throwing confetti. (laughs) Streamers, poppers. I had to go back. (laughs) Oh, no, not poppers. (laughs) There will be festive hats. I had to go back to our media host, Lipson, and identify that for sure. But yes, September 28th is the day. So we are sorely remiss in congratulating ourselves for one year in existence. Now, the three of us have not been in the podcast the whole time. I was the first to appear on a podcast episode with the former consultants, Agents Wing, Agents Op, and Agent Beef. But On the episode number 14, which is the first one on the feed right now, as this episode goes out, we came on and that was the 14th of March. So beware, we will be celebrating that date as well. This week, we had a plethora, a gross of feedback. It's awesome. And we're going to start with Twitter. Andy, he wanted to get in a line from the last episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And he said, quote, We are still happy to have a Jor Foreman grill, unquote. Best line of the episode. It was up there. I don't know if it was the best one because it wasn't for May, but it was pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) Was that the same episode with the iceberg? Yes. That was the best line of the episode to me. He must have been hungry. I thought it was the whole, she doesn't hold grudges, she savors them. (laughs) Oh, that was probably the best line because it's completely true. So you two ladies are all into May and I'm all into Coulson on this show. So it's pretty good. As far as the lines and stuff, I mean, Coulson has some pretty good lines, too. But I'll agree with you. May has some great lines, too. We also have some feedback from fellow podcaster Jay, who runs Gallifrey Public Radio and is a co-host of mine on the Starling Tribune. And he said, have you guys seen this? And no, I haven't. Did you guys actually see that? I'm looking at it right now. It's awesome, isn't it? And what it is is a gigantic Lego model of Rocket, Raccoon, and Groot. It's Rocket on Groot's shoulders, just like they were kind of in the prison. And Rocket, of course, has his weapon, so it's pretty cool. This was shown, apparently, at San Diego Comic-Con. And at the time, since I had no really experience, except for a few comics of Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, meh. And now I'm seeing it, I'm going, oh, it is so awesome. So Over seven feet high, four feet wide, and took 350 hours to design and build with 28,251 bricks. Wow. It's now, a little bit of work. Have you guys actually built anything big out of Legos? 
not that big. <laughs> uh, one time I built a peeing dog, but it didn't really look like a well dog. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look like a dog, but it definitely looked like it was peeing. I think we all tried to build dogs that night. I think the peeing dog, you guys won that part of the competition, didn't did you? Did we? I think you I did. I don't know. I think we, I, I know that our dog, we decided to make it peeing on the floor because <sighs> we couldn't figure out how to make it stand up. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, and I don't remember what we did for our dog, but when it was, was it build a robot or build a Cylon? We did manage to a get a Cylon. We got a build glowing a spine on ours. I oh. think we tried to give ours a penis. We gave ours a glowing spine and boobs. I remember yours. I remember the boobs. So Legos are fantastic. And I, <laughs> I got to put in a little plug here. I'm a big fan of geeky jerseys. You can go to geekyjerseys.com. I don't get a cent from this. I just love their stuff. Right now, they have a 80s Spaceman jersey. And by the time this podcast comes out, you're going to have to hurry really quick because you're only going to have a couple of days because it ends, I think, on the 16th of October. They're going to shut off orders. And once they shut off orders, you ain't getting it back. So it's a blue. 80s spaceman and i am so going to get one i haven't ordered one yet but i am definitely going to get one and i've got some doctor who jerseys i've got some star wars jerseys if you also listen to voices of defiance you will know that shannon has a stormtrooper jersey and sean is insanely jealous of it and there's Tron jerseys. There's a bunch of stuff. Go to geekyjerseys.com. I guarantee you, if you are listening to this podcast, you will see something on that website that is intriguing to you. The only problem is the jerseys they have for sale are only for sale for a limited time. That's how they get around the stupid little royalty thing or whatever. It's a limited run. It's like an Etsy sort of thing. And once they're gone, they're gone. So keep that on your favorites and get yourself a geeky jersey. It's fantastic. Getting back to our feedback on Twitter, our consultant, agent operator, he said, and we talked about this last week, but he said that the L plus three ratings for last episode, episode two of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. went up to 7.5 million. That was a 56% increase and really hammering the adults 18 through 49. So I think we're going to see a lot of that. I'm really interested in a couple of nights ago, Arrow premiered, or actually last night as we we're recording this, Arrow premiered at season three, and its ratings weren't as high as I would have hoped. And I'm really hoping those L plus three ratings go up. So I think we're going to see with a lot of geeky shows, the L plus three ratings, whereas people are DVRing it, they're getting it through Hulu Plus, they're getting it through the websites of the network specifically. I think we're going to see a lot of that. And we'll talk about ratings for this week in a little bit. Jesse, who is at Little Too Clinical said, I just remembered Adrian Pazdar was also in Top Gun, at which time I went, oh, <laughs> I don't remember that at all. I still haven't seen Top Gun. You haven't? No. <sighs> See, I have this memory that it was my favorite movie when I was a kid, except I don't think my parents ever let me watch it. So I don't know how that is possible. <laughs> I went to see it. With my dad, it was a sneak preview weekend, and there was additional footage, which I have never seen since. And a lot of it that I remember specifically is the crash with Maverick and Goose, and it explained what actually happened a little bit better, and they took all that out, and I don't know why. Maybe it was too gruesome or something. I, I don't remember it being gruesome. I remember it being technical, so maybe they took it out. They just wanted action. I don't know. Haley, you haven't seen it? We're going to have to fix that. Anyway, Adrian Pazdar was in it. And I had no idea. I didn't remember. I had to go Did to... Did he I have the stash? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> he showed me... Some, or I went to IMDb and I saw several pictures. Uh, Chipper was... His, you know what? I'm going to Google that right now. Chipper in Top Gun. We're going to see if he has a stash. And no, he does not. Oh. He, they were still growing that mustache in a lab when that movie was made. <laughs> He does look like a vampire, though. <laughs> he's got the a whitish face, and he's got really dark hair, and it's slicked back. So, very 80s-like. I don't think that hair is within Navy regs. It probably looks like it was oh supposed to be. Oh, my God. He looks weird. I know. I, he looks like he's eight. <laughs> Those are some immaculately groomed eyebrows, too. <laughs> I had no idea I have known Adrian Pastar that long. That's amazing. So... Thank you very much, Jesse, for bringing that to my attention. That was a fun afternoon. Look, okay, I know who he looks like. He looks, in this one picture I'm looking at, he looks kind of like a short-haired Tom Cruise in Interview with a Vampire. 
the one thing that I pointed out about Adrian Pazdar versus Tom Cruise is that Adrian Pazdar is three inches taller than Tom Cruise. Now, I don't know if that's with or without shoe lifts, because Adrian Pazdar is listed at five foot ten, and Tom Cruise is listed as five foot seven, and I'm five foot seven, and I'm probably pretty sure if I was ever standing next to Tom, I'd be three inches taller than him. So, just saying. <laughs> we also got a Twitter tweet from Suncast, who is a friend of Voices of Defiance, and he said, anyone looking for an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast should listen to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. I was like, oh, thank you very much. So that was pretty hey. cool. Okay, we got a couple of tweets from somebody that, Lauren, I think you should talk about. Okay, we've apparently been mispronouncing his Twitter name. It is not, in fact, Mr. Paracletes. It's Mr. Paracletes. I'm sorry for thinking you were like a Greek general, which is, I think, actually Pericles. But, you know, my bad. So the first tweet from him is to Ming-Na Wen at Ming-Na. I'd freak hope it happens. No, wait, no, that was her. It's from Ming-Na. It's from Ming-Na, and he retweeted it to us. Pretty please, could we have a mini May? And it's somebody did a little mock-up of those Pop Pop Funko Funko. figures of May, and it's adorable. Tiny little badge. We do have a mini May. Her name is Sky. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and she's got the kung fu grip going and everything. It's great. <laughs> yeah, she's ready to take somebody down. He also tweeted us and asked us a question. Shouldn't Gil's body float when he was in the water or was the frozen layer around him heavier than the water? That's a good science question. I actually spent some time thinking about this in my rewatch, especially when they said that they couldn't find a body for him. Okay, he did not turn himself to ice. He created an ice layer around him. And maybe it's because I really like the cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender, not the movie. The movie does not exist. <laughs> what movie? But <laughs> this is how Aang froze himself for a 100 years inside of an iceberg, and that's how he lived. So I'm wondering if maybe he froze an air bubble around him so that he could sink out of sight. I figured he went all Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of laid low for a little while. Mm-hmm. But why did he sink, though? Because plot. <laughs> I yeah, tend actually, to think, I mean, his cells supposedly created nitrogen. Yeah, they could uh, manipulate liquid nitrogen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not, I guess, pure ice. I don't know. I'm both the science at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so are they. Well, don't worry. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll have to go look at our element table and see which element is actually heavier and then decide exactly what he's doing to the area around him and get back to you. So we'll just do that. Okay. Also, Andy hit us with a quote from this episode, quote, train spotty. I'm not Scottish. Nice reference there. Need to watch that movie again. And for the record, it is listed as the 10th best movie out of Britain. So... Train spot. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it Aww. either, but apparently it's, good. it's really good. It's good. It's not my favorite Danny Boyle movie that would still have to be Sunshine, but it's a pretty good movie. Well, it must be because it is literally on their list of top 100 movies out of Britain. It is literally their number 10, so it's got to be good. Jesse also tweeted us and he says, as a former U.S. Army MP, I can assure you the lack of realism on NCIS doesn't end at the science. And yes, we all know that. We all watch yeah. Jag and we're disappointed. So there you go. <laughs> Agent Op also tweeted us, and he said in response to that, but the folks at the retirement community love it. Fart noise? Huh? What? Phone's ringing. And I can't do the old guy voice as well as they do, so I'm not going to do it. Jesse liked your quote, Haley, from last week. Old computer haver. It's the best insult ever. It is. It cuts deep, doesn't it? And you know, even though my computer that I'm using now is a couple of months older, it's better, it's faster than Haley's, but hers is newer, so she (laughs) still gets to have the insult. Sucks. That's right. He also says, I've been in love with Jeremy Renner since National Lampoon Senior Trip, and I think if you're really in love with him, then you have other issues to deal with. I think he's not to love. He's ugly. (laughs) No, he's not. I think he's quoting me, though. (laughs) Or maybe not. I don't know. Because I have said that before. So thank you all for the Twitter love. We really appreciate it. Just hit us with at Legends of Shield and we will respond. Moving on to Facebook, Willie Nelson hit us with, where are you guys at? I'm Jordan from some Legends of Shield. Now, let me tell you. 
First of all, I was working on it. Second of all, we recorded on Thursday night. And then Friday night, I had a charity event I had to go to. Saturday was all day with the family. So the first day I actually had to work on it was Sunday. Oh, and I worked on Friday. So I'm not making excuses, but I did get it out as fast as I could. Hopefully this week will be a little bit faster. Realize you want your cast, Willie. And we appreciate you listening. Jonathan also said, I never saw Joaquin Phoenix in the part, to be honest, and I doubt he was really Marvel's top choice. More like Blasters, he's talking about Doctor Strange. And we talked about that last week. You ladies have anything else to say about that? Forever and always Oded Fair for Doctor Strange. (laughs) I will also allow Pedro Pascal. Okay, maybe. (laughs) Distant second. But forever and always Oded Fair. Okay. Jesse hit us with a question. Is it just me or is this season way more action focused? What do you ladies think? I think it's because they're not on the bus. They have a little more room to do stuff. Also, they don't have to be the setup anymore. The first season was taking it slow and being the setup. And now it's just like, okay, we've set up everything. Now we can just go. Let's just go. Let's just go and be awesome. Yeah, I've a little bit more to say about about this episode. But yes, I would agree with you on the forum. We had somebody hit us up. Grego, the, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Van Gogh-Sarian. Anybody have a guess uh, there? Van Gogian. Van Gogian? Okay. I would also say Van Gogian. Okay. Grego the Van Gogian. I was rewatching Shadows tonight thinking about the cage the DOD put Creel into. Did it remind anyone else of the kind of cage used for Magneto in the movies? Kind of neat to think they recycled that container, or at least inspired by it, for another purpose, even though they didn't think it through with Creel's powers. And I got to say, we saw it also with Hulk in the Star Carrier in Avengers. And there's just something about a glass cage that just... Yeah, we also saw it in uh, Skyfall. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Not my favorite movie, but I do own it. And it is a good movie, just not my favorite. Haley, do you have anything to say about Mr. James Bond? I haven't seen Skyfall. Really? Oh. <laughs> no Top Gun, no Skyfall. Check, check. Okay, we got to fix that. What have you seen? I saw Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> The TV what show, is not the wrong? movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are chock full of voicemails this week, so I'm just going to get to it. You ready to hear from our consultant, Agent Op, ladies? Ready? Yes. Hey, guys. This is Agent Operator. How y'all doing? I uh, just want to say a quick note. You guys are rocking it on the cast. Very, very cool. Most awesome. Um, lots more people should listen. Back at it. Um, also, as far as what would Fitz do with a monkey, he would probably shave the monkey down uh, and put a little lab coat on it so it can be his lab assistant. Um, why does he shave the monkey first? Because those lab coats can get hot, and he has to think ahead so the monkey doesn't pass out, you know, during some experiments. So, you know, and of course, you know, shaves everywhere because, you know, ew. And uh, let's see. Oh, as far as the ratings are concerned, Uh, One of the things you may want to look into also is the Live Plus 3 ratings, because a lot of people, as we mentioned on Legends Podcast, uh, a lot of people are DVRing Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., and it will bring it up a full percentage point as far as the ratings are concerned in some cases. So as far as, like, the live ratings are concerned, don't freak out too badly if they're low. Check out the Live Plus 3 ratings, and those are usually pretty freaking awesome. So, again, awesome job, guys. Keep up the great work. This is Agent Op. I am out. All right. We have our second contestant for the Shield T-shirt. What would Fitz do with the monkey? He would shave the monkey and put it in a lab coat. That's one way to go. Yeah, it seems like it'd be kind of hard to hold the monkey down. You do it when the monkey's sleeping? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think a monkey would look cute in a lab coat. I mean, maybe not bald, though. You got to leave some hair on the head. You could like... Like a little comb over. Yeah. <laughs> a little size of the glasses, or too. Or you could, you could keep the rest of the shaved hair and then glue it into creative <laughs> shapes and then glue that on top of the monkey's head. <laughs> so you could have like architectural hair. Maybe a mohawk. Looks perfectly natural. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a mohawk or a mullet. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for the voicemail, Agent Op. We also got a voicemail from Jesse. And you ladies ready to hear that? Of course. Yes. Okay. Hey, guys. It's Jesse at Little Too Clipical on Twitter. And uh, I was watching Incredible Hulk again over the weekend with my son. And I noticed that the director was French. So this isn't really why Wing is wrong, but it does explain a little bit why Wing loves it so much. I just thought that was a cute, cute little thing. 
and I thought I'd share it with you guys. I uh, love the show. Still listening every day because I've got some episodes backlogged. I suppose you could edit that out. Love it. Have a good one. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha! It wasn't edited out. You are shamed in the public. Everybody is caught up to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Come on, man. Yeah. Just kidding. Hey, if you say it on the voicemail, I'm going to throw it in. So there you go. Wing? Hmm. For those of you new to the cast, Agent Operator and Agent Wing, and Agent B for that matter, started this podcast, and they're over on the Goody Geek Network on Legends Podcast, so go over to Legends Podcast and listen to them talk hysterically funny about movies every week. It's great. They also do a newscast. We are solely devoted to Marvel News. They do news about just about everything. So one of the big things, though, is we need to know why Wing is wrong and make it funny, because he's been wrong so many times. Matter of fact, he was kind of pissing me off this week on something, but there's tons of wings wrong. So call it in, make it funny, and we will put it on the air. As far as Incredible Hulk, uh, we've covered that quite a bit. You guys have anything else to say about that? I can't believe I didn't put that together. <laughs> that the director was French and that's why Wing liked it? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Could be Wing explained. So there you go, Jesse. Moving on, we have a voicemail from our friend of the cast, Adam. You ladies ready to listen to that one? Yep. Yep. Hey, agents. This is Adam, just calling with some thoughts on the last episode. So, Colson sent uh, Simmons undercover without telling Fitz or anyone else. That's cool. Jerry would be proud of that. <laughs> no. Um... Yeah, you remember how at the end of last season I was concerned that Director Coulson meant that he'd sort of be stuck back at base while May led the team? Well, preview for next week makes it look like, look like that streak will be broken, but seems like in general I was right so far. I uh, can't wait to hear your thoughts on the episode. Talk to you later. <laughs> What do you think about his comment about Coulson being very fury like? I think it's one of those things where the position makes you act a certain way. And yeah. it's like, no matter how much you say, oh, I'm not going to be like that, you find yourself having to be like that. Yeah. Have you watched Orange is the New Black yet? Yes. Okay. It's like in the finale when the new guy becomes the warden and then his yeah. very first day, he's got to cover up a major scandal. Run, nuns! <laughs> <laughs> It's my first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we will see Coulson in the field next week. A little spoiler there for those that have not watched the trailer for next week. It was on at the end of the episode, so we consider it for a game. But Coulson is shown shipping, I guess, with me <laughs> a little bit. So that's pretty cool. Thank you very much for the voicemail, Adam. We appreciate it. And we have yet another voicemail from our consultant, Agent Op. You ladies ready to listen to this one? I guarantee you it'll be worth it. Of yeah. course. All right. Hey guys, it's Agent Op again. Uh, let's see. I was looking at the, I was looking at your podcast and I was also, uh, Going by the questions. Um, as far as the Marvel top five, I gotta say Spider-Man 2099, uh, Spider-Man, and, uh, let's see, Captain Marvel, Black Widow, and Spider-Woman. Damn, there are a lot of spiders in my choice. Um, and let's see, episode feedback as far as, uh, friends influencing people. I really wanted Fitz to kill Ward. I really did. I gotta admit it. I was like, yeah, you need to go now. You're, you're, you're a son of a bitch. You need to go. You do. Um, let's see. Science of Marvel questions. What do you think allows the, uh, the bus to go invisible? Do you think it's a refraction of light? How do you think that uh, whole cloaking uh, system works? Why Wing is wrong? I do two podcasts with the dude. I, the ways that Wing is wrong would take up an entire two or three shows of yours. Um, what I would like to see is the untitled 2018 Fox-produced Marvel-based comic movie. Honestly, I'd like to see an X-Factor movie. I really would. I'd love to see, like, Cable and Psylocke and all those people. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Uh, although it'll probably be, like, another, you know, Wolverine or X-Men or something. Um, what kind of sport did Agent Col would Agent Coulson have played in school? I always kind of pictured him as racquetball or squash, to be honest. Um, and all female Avengers line up. Um, Black Widow, Spider Woman, uh, Captain Marvel would be the top three. And then you would probably.
probably be able to throw in the female Thor, maybe Valkyrie. Uh, t- 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 she Hulk, definitely She Hulk. Um, yeah, those are pretty much lined it up. Those are pretty much lined it up. So, um, yeah, those may answer your questions. Great show. Keep up the awesome work. And uh, again, this past episode, the the whole season sucks. No, just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was caught by the voicemail limit. He's probably going to say the whole season has been phenomenal so far, which I would agree to. And what do you ladies think of his all women Avengers team? Yeah, he's got a lot of the same people we put on there. Pretty good. But the thing that most stood out to me is, and I'm sorry for being this nerd, but his lineup that he was thinking for the Fox movie is actually X-Force, not (laughs) X-Factor. And you call yourself a comic book fan. (laughs) Fake geek guy. No, we're kidding. You're cool. I can't (laughs) believe that a guy on a comic comic book podcast, literally comic book legends, didn't get that right. But no, it's fine. There's so many X whatever titles that I don't blame them for slipping. (laughs) I was just going to say we love you anyway. We do. We do. And honestly, I'd like to see an X-Force or X-Factor movie. Either way, I like both those teams. I like his racquetball or squash because especially what we see in the short on the way to New Mexico, where he's running up and down the aisles and up and down the walls and that sort of stuff. You get the feeling that he's inside a racquetball court. I have no idea what the difference is between racquetball or squash, but I will probably be bad at both of them because one of the last times I played racquetball, I ran side of the head first into a wall and they had to call (laughs) the um, paramedics. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Racquetball is with a racket and squash, I believe, is with your hand, although I'm not sure about that. There's also a game called handball. So not totally sure I was about sure to say, that. isn't that handball? Yeah, well, I think handball's not in a racquetball court, but I could be mistaken on that. I want to talk about the bus, and he's asking why the bus is invisible. I got to tell you, if you watch Top Gun, you'll see, or Top Gun, if you watch Top Gear, you'll see basically what they're talking about. You have cameras on one side, and they take a picture of what's on that side, and they project it on the other side. So that's the visible spectrum. In the radar spectrum, there's all sorts of shaping and materials that are needed in the audio spectrum. Again, they're shaping to shape where the sound is. Stealth is not just one thing, right? You don't just have a cloaking device. It's an entire system of systems. And you have to go through every single from visible, RF, infrared, because let's face it, jet engines are hot and a jet is pretty hot in comparison to the background of the sky. So you have to take that in consideration. I mean, if you take an IR camera and you look at a house as it is in the winter and you see where all the heat is coming from, the temperature is really not all that much of a gradient difference, right? So it's maybe, maybe 20, 30 degrees. And don't ask me about Celsius. I don't care. But you see the redness about around the, that. What's that? About half that. Yeah. You see the redness around the windows. So imagine that sort of thing on the background of the sky. So with, in some cases, with the jet engine exhaust, you're talking about thousands of degrees difference. So you have that going on. So I like to think that they didn't get all those other things. They just made it invisible. Like you can still see it on radar. It's still got a heat signature. You just can't see it. From well, the ground. The sound effect as it was flying by was muted compared to what it normally is. So there is some audio component to it as well. And Fitz himself mentions that when they were screwing around with it earlier, a couple episodes ago. So there's a lot about that. Yeah, y'all are the ones to ask about that sort of thing. I'm the one who's You're like, more for um, the squishy science. Yeah, I'm much more for the squishy science. I'm the one who's like, um, it has numbers, <laughs> metal. <laughs> Things? <laughs> what, one last thing about the visible light spectrum. You're talking about refraction of light that is possible if you throw a plasma bubble around it, kind of like a black hole, right? So you're refracting light around it and it ends up coming out the other side and going straight. So you're just bending it around. So that's a possibility. Maybe, maybe the device has a mini black hole in it. I don't know. I would think it would kind of make it hard to fly around since it would be so heavy, but you know, whatever. So, we also have a voicemail from Haley's co-host on Gallifrey Public Radio, Jay, and also my co-host on Starly Tribune, a podcast on Arrow. So, we're talking about Doctor Who, Arrow, all great podcasts you can find on the Gunna Geek Network. You ladies ready to listen to it? Yep. Hey, guys. This is Jay. 
I was just wanting to call her and we'll watch the episode. <laughs> I seriously, I didn't want to believe it, but I really think that we saw the first few steps of Fitz going full-blown supervillain. I mean, I know he stopped himself, and I know he said, I'm not a killer, and the first thing that popped out of my mouth was, yet. Uh, this was incredibly dark, and I completely understand where it was from. And that's what makes a great villain, is when you can understand their motivations. You may not agree with them, but if you understand them, they become great villains. So, uh, this might be where we're going here. Um, but in regards to the what would Fitz do with a monkey thing, uh, I seriously think that he would basically have a monkey as an office assistant dressed in it, it would either be like a you know a nice business suit with either like a curly blonde wig or a bow tie on depending if it was a boy or girl monkey <laughs> or uh, use him basically like the little guy that Scotty had in the Star Trek reboot I don't even know if the guy had a name but yeah that's what I'm thinking if he would basically be like an office assistant or you know just like a lab helper so thanks for the great cast and keep it up I look forward to hearing next week <laughs> Jay you have me at Scotty so we have entrance number three for the shield t-shirt Jay with the bow tie I wonder where he's getting the bow tie from Haley do you have any idea on that I don't know probably some goofy British show <laughs> and by the way the, the little guy from Star Trek Into Darkness his name is Keenzer oh he's cute I like him yes you know, between Keenzer and Admiral Archer's dog, I got to go with Keenzer. But Admiral Archer's dog is pretty cute, too. For those of you that don't know what we're talking about, Captain Archer was on the Star Trek television show Enterprise, and he had a dog on board the ship. And then aside from Data's cat, I think they're the only two pets on a starship. Well, okay, Picard's fish. I got to stop. It will probably get more. Oh, and all the animals in the doctor's lab in Enterprise, so... Okay, I gotta stop now. All right, so <laughs> the Fitz supervillain thing, and Op mentioned it in his Fitz to Kill Ward. Yes, that would have been cool. What do you ladies think? I do have to agree that I think Fitz is going to be the one to go supervillain this year. I think they're misleading us to think that it's going to be Gemma, but I'm still convinced that Fitz is going to go to the dark side this season. It could be both. Nope, I think Simmons is going to bring him back. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about it next in the episode part of this, so we'll save the rest of the discussion from there, but I think that's it for that, and oh, by the way, right before we recorded, he got it in under the wire, our consultant, again, he's got a triple, it's a true hat <laughs> trick, consultant Agent Op sent us another voicemail, you ladies ready to listen to his third and final voicemail of the night. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, Agent Operator again. Sorry, I uh, forgot to mention Silk. Uh, you were asking about her. She has been in Marvel Comics for a grand total of maybe four months. If that, I think I'm actually being a little generous. So she's really new as far as the Spider-Man universe is concerned, and I think she's more tied into the whole Spider-Verse thing uh, that's going on right now that, yes, is being created by Dan Slott. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Dan Slott, mainly because of what he did with... Um, uh, Dr. Octopus invading Spider-Man's body and kind of taking him, taking over his body for a while, like a la Freaky Friday. And, uh, I mean, when you got Big Bang Theory saying it's a stupid idea, it was a stupid idea. So, um, yeah, Silk is really new. I can see Sony kind of making a movie about her, but or wanting to make a movie out of her, but that doesn't mean they're going to, especially with all the stuff that's going on over at the studio right now. They genuinely don't know what to do with the character because they're not making enough money off of it, and Marvel's sitting there going, gimme, 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 gimme. So, you know, it's going to be a big question of if they're going to do it or not. But uh, another thing, by the way, S.H.I.E.L.D. comic coming, end of the year. Uh, it's going to have fits. It's going to have... Uh, Colson, it's going to have May, it's going to have the monkey, so I'm sure you guys are aware of it, but it's coming out at the end of the year, so S.H.I.E.L.D. comic book. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, I think that's it. Okay, fine. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Consultant Agent Op. We really appreciate you calling in. Thank you, Jesse, Adam, and Jay. Thank you very much for calling in. All right. So we're closing off the contest. We've got our three entrants. Willie called in last week with his. We have Jay. We have Agent Op. Who do you ladies want to win the t-shirt? 
I'm still a fan of the dress the monkey up like Simmons. Yeah, I think say Willie. I think I have to go with Lauren and say Willie's right. Jay, you almost had me, man. The Scotty, the Star Trek, you knew how to play me, but the ladies win this one. So it's as Simmons. we always do. <laughs> I'm outvoted. I get you I mean hey, I run the podcast. I flip some switches, you know. And the monkey flips the switch. That's right. That's right. So congratulations, Willie. Go ahead, shoot me your address again, and we will get you the t-shirt. We'll be running another contest. We'll take a week or two to figure out what we're going to give away, and we will get back to you in the following weeks. All right, you heard a lot about questions being answered during the voicemail. We have a lot of questions out there. There will be in the show notes. You heard Agent Op talk about his top five Marvel characters all-female Avengers team, the science of Marvel questions. We've got a couple of those. We talked about why Wing is wrong. Let you guys know, get us your feedback on the episode. We're switching to record on Wednesday nights, so there's a very narrow window. You have about 24 hours between when the episode airs and when you can get back to us. So go ahead, do that. And if you can't make the deadline, don't worry about it. We will definitely play it the next week. We want to hear from you. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> all no. right we're gonna move I mean, on. yes yeah. gosh <laughs> we're gonna be moving on we're gonna be talking about ratings for this week Haley, what do we got okay tuesday's episode episode three of the season got 4.73 million viewers on live plus same day and then we have last week's numbers for episode two that have been adjusted for live plus three day and it went from 5 million up to 7.5 million which was Pretty impressive improvement. Yes. I think we're going to be seeing more and more and more of this. I think, especially with all the great shows out there right now. I mean, how many shows you watch in a week, ladies? Like 30. Way too many. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a lot of great TV on. You know, when cable came out, there wasn't a lot of great geek shows out there. There are a lot of great geek shows out there now, and it's really difficult to fit them all in. It's difficult for us to podcast about all of them, and we're trying to get you. I have an app that's sole purpose is to help me keep track of when new episodes come out of all the shows I watch, because I can't do it myself. What app is that? Because I need Side Reel. Side Side Reel. Reel. It's a website, too. SideReel.com. It's fantastic. You just track all of your shows, and it's got a calendar mode, and it's got a missed episode mode. Because I actually forgot that one of the shows that I watched was on yesterday. (laughs) and (laughs) Yes, I did too. Okay, so I didn't really forget because I've been podcasting about it, Arrow. So it came on and it was 8.30 by the time I got in for mowing the lawn and it comes on at 8 where I'm at. And I was like, oh, the DVRs have it. They didn't. I had shut off the recording of the DVRs last season because I hadn't seen them yet. So I was like, eh, I'll just buy the iTunes pass and get it that way. And that's how I was watching the episodes. I had to run around the house and turn on all the... I've got four DVRs. I had to turn on three of them on Arrow. It was just incredible. But yes. See, was- I got so caught up in watching American Horror Story that I completely forgot that South Park was on. <laughs> I did catch Star Wars Rebels, by the way. Excellent Isn't stuff. It good? It's great. I can't wait for the next episode. So there's just so much geekery going on right now. It's incredible. And it is literally Every night we're talking a uh, Doctor Who on Saturday night. We're talking Flash on Tuesday night, Arrow on Wednesday night, Tuesday night. We also have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the show that we're podcasting about. So it's every night there's something on. It's like, man, I need to get caught up on this stuff. So it's great. But when you're talking about ratings and you're talking about ratings at 4.73, it's going to go up to three, two and a half. Last week, it went up about two and a half. We're going to see that on every single show. And it's great that they're starting to take these L plus three ratings because we needs it. We needs it, precious. (laughs) All right. This won't be the last week that we talk about it, but we have our new numbers pre-China opening of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, this is the last time we'll be giving you the numbers without China's box office factored in. And it's sitting at $324 million domestic and $654 million worldwide. Do we want to put down a quarter bet on how much we think it's going to make in China? I'm <laughs> thinking 170 I'm sitting out because I am no good with large numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I would have put it between, I'm going to guess $150 million. Okay. That's a little bit better than Captain America did. It's not too late to put a quarter down, Lauren. You can go 125 You can go 200 there's no wrong answer here. 
You could go 171. Yes, that's true. Do it. Do it. You could go 151. Okay, you go, I'll 171. go 171. 171. I'll, I'll change mine to 169. <laughs> <laughs> closest without going over. That means if it doesn't make up to 169, we all lose, though. No, I think we're just playing closest. I thought we were closest without going over. This is not the price is right. It's always the price is right. We could be playing by price is right rules. The price is right rules everything. Come <laughs> on. All right. So your original one was 150. We're going to put Lauren yeah. at 171 and I'll go 170. So we'll see what it gets us. All right. We promise we have an episode to talk about. In the meantime, we do have a lot of great news stories to talk about. And we're going to run through them as quick as we can. Yeah. Speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, we told you last week that it was coming out on December 9th. They have since then released some of the bonus features we can expect to see on there. And... There's going to be a Blu-ray combo pack, and it's going to come with all of the deleted scenes and making of featurettes, and most importantly, an audio commentary, which will at least include James Gunn, plus probably some other people. They don't know for sure yet. And the gag reel, which I am looking forward to so much. <laughs> Especially yes. with Chris Pratt. That's going to be awesome. Especially with the little stuffed rocket on set. Yeah, that's true. I and the if- blue guy on stilts being Groot. <laughs> I mean, you know that guy had to fall over a time or two. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. Oh, that's great. Uh, oh, and there's going to be an exclusive look at Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah. But you're going to want to pay attention to what you buy because the DVD edition only gets the Age of Ultron footage and one deleted scene. I ho- hope they put a Blu-ray DVD combo pack out there. So that's what I like to buy. Yeah, I like those too. But what was it? Captain America? It was a Blu-ray Blu-ray 3D combo pack. There wasn't one with the DVD in it. It did come with a digital copy though. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I went for. And I'm sure there's some special features on there that I didn't get. I mean, I'm just going to buy it from where I buy it. And that's going to be it. Probably the easiest for me. I might even pre-order it from Amazon. So we'll just see. <laughs> also with Guardians of the Galaxy as it opens tomorrow we're podcasting on Thursday October 9th it opens tomorrow in China on Friday October 10th and <laughs> the title it's, this is great uh, Richard keyed us onto this on Twitter and he's at Kodiak GWC Guardians of the Galaxy's China title is the greatest <laughs> interplanetary unusual attacking team <laughs> Which, if you read the article, there's a little bit more to it. Reddit has done some extra investigation, calling it out as being the Taiwanese title. So the corrected titles are Interstellar Special Ability Team or Interstellar Different Commandos, which are still pretty great. (laughs) I think I like Interstellar Special Ability Team better. I kind of have to agree with you. They kind of ride the short bus. I mean, the Milano is kind of a short spaceship, you know, Anyway, it's great. There was one Facebook post on it said basically, yeah, let's face it. We didn't know who Guardians of the Galaxy were before this movie was either. So it's all fair game. So that's pretty cool. Also, I saw an article on a woman carving a Groot statue out of wood with a chainsaw. Chainsaw art is great. You see it in Groundhog Day when they're doing the ice sculptures. You see it with wood all the time up in the north woods, up at the lake. They actually, when they cut down trees, they leave high stumps and they make cool bears and birds and stuff like that out of it. Well, this lady did it with a Groot and the Groot, the face of the Groot. It's, it's so cute. It is. It's great. It's probably the best representation of a Groot I have seen. Yeah, it's pretty fabulous. Fabulous. All right, Haley, what else we got? Well, the Nerdist this week did an interview with Ming-Na Wen, who, as we all know, is mine and Lauren's hero because she's fantastic. <laughs> yes. Agent 13 for the win. Yep. Uh, She talked in this article a little bit about some of the relationships that they're getting to explore between different characters this season. And she specifically mentions the one between Mac and Fitz and that it's a little bit like of mice and men. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I definitely see that. Uh, It's great, though. We'll get to some of the relations because this episode was a lot about the characters and their relationships and stuff. So I'm glad this interview came out right now. Also, we have another article on Doctor Strange and Marvel Studios, and I don't... This is worse... I think this is worse than Ant-Man at this point. It is. It's Strange Gate. I don't know. (laughs) When are they projected to start filming this puppy? 
the day after they get the contract signed for the lead actor. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it now. Yeah. So Blaster ran another article on it, and I, we talked about it last week, but Joaquin Phoenix is just, he's not going to be there. So uh, Avengers 3 is rumored to not include most of the key Avengers. I think that could actually work out well for them because the Avengers team has always been kind of a roving lineup. If by the third one, they're starting to bring in a lot of new people, that could work out pretty well. It could. It could. It also, I mean, we get to a little bit later with Robert Downey Jr., but yeah, I agree. It depends on where they want to go. And they've really opened the universe up with Guardians of the Galaxy. Be people, it was a great singular movie, but it's opening up the entire universe. Like literally the universe, not just the Marvel universe. It's, you know, the universe that Marvel is in, which is the universe. And there's going to be a lot of people there. The next article talks about the fact that Avengers 3 may lead into an even bigger Marvel film. Yeah, for uh, the last couple of weeks, there have kind of been rumors that nobody really took seriously that Avengers 3 was going to get split into two films as a way to somehow get around contracts and stuff with the actors, which I think most people that know anything about contracts know that probably wasn't going to work. But now they're talking about Avengers 3 might lead into an even bigger team-up movie that's going to bring in more of the galactic heroes that they are the cosmic heroes that they haven't had a chance to bring into the Avengers yet. And it could be something like the Infinity Gauntlet or the Secret War. It's going to be amazing whatever they pull off because at this point, the original Avengers is not much on the horizon for the individual films. I mean, we've got Captain America 3, but aside from that, I mean, there's no Hulk movie. There's no Iron Man 4 movie. There's no... Uh, is there another Thor movie? I can't yes. remember. Yes. Yeah. I thought there was. But, I mean, just one more. And there's not anything else out there. And some of it is due to the contracts that these people are on. And some of it's due to other things. But I don't know. I mean, as you're looking at the schedule, there's other movies that they're moving into. And that is going to lead to bigger team-ups and everything. But, I'm, oh, man, the way Marvel is going... Everything that Kevin Feige is doing is gold. So if Kevin Feige says do it, if Kevin Feige calls me in the middle of the night with a number that doesn't have all the right digits, I'm going to be there. I mean, just I don't care. I'll sign whatever you want me to sign. I'll be there. But in the meantime, we're talking about contract extensions for several of the original Avengers. Yes, we are. According to thisisinfamous.com, Okay, well, you've probably heard, and if you haven't, then this is where you're hearing it, that in promoting his new movie, The Judge, Robert Downey Jr. has been fielding a lot of questions about Iron Man 4. And was like, is there one coming? Will you do it? And he said, well, I'll do it if Mel Gibson directs. And everyone's like, ah! And then he's like, no, no, I'm just kidding. But it's kind of seeming like he's revving everybody up for Iron Man 4 in this article. What I also learned is that these conversations have also occurred in regards to Chris Evans doing another Captain America past contract and Chris Hemsworth doing an additional Thor. So this is, of course, just a rumor. This is all just speculation. But if we could get another movie out of it for each of them or if another team up movie or something, that could be cool. It might be overstaying their welcome. I personally don't think so because I'm still loving these movies. But we'll see, and hopefully Marvel will not not give them money, because that was apparently a problem with Avengers 2. You know, at this point in time, at least with the original cadre of actors, if it doesn't go bigger, it's a failure. Like, if they make $500 million with Avengers 2, that's going to be a failure. That's not going to happen, but that would be a failure, yeah. right? So, And if they don't make $500 million with the secondary films that they have going out now, that's kind of a failure. Honestly, if Avengers 2 doesn't make at least a billion dollars, they're going to be considerate underperforming. Right. So it leads to, again, we keep having this discussion. When is the fall of the MCU going to happen? I tend to think it's going to be around when Kevin Feige leaves. Now, is it going to be because there's a downfall that Kevin Feige leaves, or is the downfall going to be because 
Kevin Feige has left. I don't know. I mean, we've seen successful transitions before. Haley, I'm going to talk about the Doctor Who universe. We've seen that transition from, what was his name, before Steemo. Uh, the original guy that brought oh, uh, Russell T. Davies. Yeah, we saw. I was going to say RJD or RDJ, <laughs> but I was like, no, wrong initials, wrong initials. Yeah. yeah, so Russell T. Davies brought back Who in 2005. Stephen Moffat is the in charge of it now, and he's gotten it even bigger and better. Hopefully, whoever takes it over next will get bigger and better. I can't say. I mean, there's a lot of good people that are in Marvel's house besides Kevin Feige, but Kevin Feige is the reason why we're here. So hopefully the next person will be able to take it in in uh, better. But in the meantime, when are they going to have to totally retool? Or when is this going to go into obscure? As I don't know. I hope it rides for another 10, 15 years at this point. And I think they have a plan for 10, 15 years. So I'm willing to ride that plan. Yeah, especially if they're willing to change out big actors and stuff before they're over the hill. Like, you know, we love seeing Robert Downey Jr. do Iron Man movies. But if he's still doing them when he's in his 70s, it probably might not work as well. <laughs> They can totally do next Avengers, though, where it's like old Tony Stark looking after the Avengers kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with this. Some things in this suit don't react well to bullets. It's a really good soup? Sean Connery impression. <laughs> Did you say in the soup? In suit. Soup? That's <laughs> why I have the book. No. That's why I... It is. Yeah, that's why I, I have to book, because then I don't have to. Okay, now I'm getting really bad. I was <laughs> doing a couple getting? of Sean, Sean, yeah, okay. I was doing a couple of Sean Connery imitations. One was from Hunt for Red October, and one was from Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones in the Temple of Doom. Last Crusade. Yeah, that's right. And the I've Last Crusade. I've seen one of those movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, that is Sean Connery, who was James Bond, one of the hottest guys of his day when he was getting older. And oh, you want to see him hot? Watch Zardoz. He's uh, running no, 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 around no, no. in. I, mean, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen. Shots I have of it. seen the movie. It is an experience. My point is, someday Robert Downey Jr. is going to be like that, and he's still going to running do around all- in man panties. <laughs> no. He's going to be older doing movies, and while they're still going to be cool movies, they're not going to be the action hero movies that he did when he was younger. So, All right. So, I haven't seen this. Fox is developing an X-Men TV show? A live action X-Men TV show. Wow. (laughs) Generation X Part (laughs) 2. Have y'all ever seen the pilot for the live action Generation X show they did back in the 90s? No. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Although they did get the guy who did Banshee's voice in the cartoon to be Banshee. Oh. Yeah. But there was a couple of actual Generation X characters that they were like, these people will be too expensive to do their power, so we're changing them to other characters. And then they made Jubilee white. Okay. Jubilee is supposed to be Chinese American. <laughs> That's like in the DC universe with Raza Gould. <laughs> it's like, yeah, can't we get an Asian to play him? I don't. Know. Yeah, not that Liam Neeson wasn't cool, but all right. Okay, so we talked a little bit about it about Robert Downey Jr. But apparently, he wants an agent. I'm of- sorry, it yeah. was Mutant X, not Generation X. Oh, uh, okay. No, wait, no, it was Generation X. Mutant X was, I think, a different show. <laughs> yeah, I watched Mutant X and I yeah. barely remember it. I want I remember I wanted to see it because I thought it was going to be like X-Men and it was. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, Robert Downey Jr. wants an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cameo. So let's just make that happen. I don't care how it happens. I want to see Iron Man in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. With the science babies? <laughs> yes! If everybody thinks it at the same moment for like 10 minutes... Maybe it'll happen. Okay, everybody mail Disney a quarter so they can get yes. Robert Dowdy Jr. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be an awesome Kickstarter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we want Robert Downey Jr. on a TV show, but we can't afford him. So how badly do you guys want him? <laughs> Dude, they've made $7 billion off this movie franchise. They can, you know, chuck some of that money his way I to get him in an episode. I you wanted to take all that money and put it into extending Stanley's life. That's right. That's that's what we got to kickstart. Okay, so that's yeah, that's how we got to kickstart. Everybody mail in a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so there's a great article out there. I won't go into depth on it, but a lot of people posted it on Facebook. It was how to turn the Star Trek into the next Marvel movie universe. And there was four or five key steps in there. And Kevin Feige was one, by the way. And it is really great read. Go ahead and read it. It's not entirely... I mean, it's dealing with Star Trek and not Marvel, but it's saying how Marvel's success happened, or at least the key points. So go ahead and read that. Moving on. We have a possible connection in the MCU between Spider-Man and Marvel. Well, I mean, Spider-Man and the MCU. It's just a rumor, but it is a reported rumor that the Spider-Man film universe may be connecting with the Marvel's cinematic universe. And it's a work in progress, but... Uh, you could play with intellectual properties to make it happen, apparently. I don't know. Apparently, it's if Fox decides to sell back the rights to Marvel, I think. Because, yeah, we've talked about how, uh, well, Op talked about how it's not making them as much money as they were hoping. I think I read somewhere that if the Sinister Six movie that they're planning to make underperforms, then they might decide to cut their losses, sell the rights back to Marvel. And then Marvel would be able to bring Spider-Man and all those associated characters back into the Marvel Universe, which I think would be awesome because I've always loved Spider-Man on the Avengers. Now, we've talked about it a little bit already with TV in the fact that there's something cool on TV like every night, right? And in some cases, multiple shows every night that are comic book related, right? So when you take a look at the movie universes and you take a look at the successes and failures, I mean, it's a big gamble that DC is taking right now with their Batman versus Superman movie and lining it up against and and they switched it up but lining it up, up against Captain 3 release and it was Spider-Man came out earlier this year I haven't seen it yet because I mean I only have so much time and there's the problem is that Spider-Man didn't do as well as Captain America 2 and they were really close to each other and it's like uh, I don't know if how much can the geek population <laughs> spend to keep this stuff going on. And it, on TV, it's time and your attention. You can only give so much. So some of these shows are going to are not going to make it through. Spider-Man might be a casualty in the movie universe, which is kind of sad because it's a really great property. Right. And, you know, we've been doing this, you know, your top five characters. Spider-Man has been in almost everybody's top five characters. I don't know if Captain America has been in anybody's top five characters. Been in mine. And, well, you don't count. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then when the movies both came out this summer, Captain America is the one that everyone went to see because everyone knows that Marvel's going to put out a great movie. And the Spider-Man movie didn't look like it was going to be as good as the Captain America movie was. And the trailers were awesome for the Spider-Man movie, by the way. And I did want to go see it. I just didn't have the time to go see it. So, I mean, it's like that. And see, I saw it. It's just that, you know, I still don't have the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked Andrew Garfield and... Emma Stone? Yes, thank you. I was going to say the girl from Easy A. But, <laughs> yeah, Emma Stone in the movie as their characters. But the story just never really gelled for me. Whereas with Winter Soldier, it was a solid story all the way through. And I think that's what made a good chunk of the difference. Definitely. Yeah. So we'll see if they sell the property rights back, which I thought was never going to happen. I mentioned it before. If they sell the property rights, I mean, that just gives Marvel more things to play around with and they can spread out things a little bit more. It's like Spider-Man won't go into obscurity he just won't be out there. They won't there. have to put a movie out every two years or whatever it is that Sony has to do. Yeah. So it's actually beneficial of the entire property and the entire comic world. So, yeah, it could be good, but we'll see what happens. I mean, Sony did make money off of it, right? Well, yeah, they didn't. They aren't in the hole or anything on it. Yeah. But so. it's just not the amount of money they were expecting to make they, with their comic It was like profit. they only made like an F-150 full of money and not dump trucks full of money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's from a Texas woman, people. So <laughs> trucks and Texas women, you got to love it. So we're talking about the Sinister Six movie. Spider-Man might be recast for it. Yeah. According to Badass Digest, it's one of the options that's being considered. 
We know that they've been working around the Sinister Six movie, especially with in the most recent movie, you have the uh, case of villain accessories like the Vulture's wings and Doc Ock's arms and those things. But rumor has it that Sony is going to a soft reboot Spider-Man with a new actor playing Spider-Man who works with the villains Dirty Dozen style to take down a large threat. I don't know how I feel about that. Also, it looks like Venom might be canceled. The yeah, movie, and so, so much for the 2017 female Spidey universe movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Lots of moving parts, and we're starting to see some... We just got done talking with, about it. Some stuff is starting to fall apart right now. As a matter of fact, Marvel, there's a rumor out there that Marvel's canceling Fantastic... Didn't we talk about this before, that Marvel was canceling Fantastic Four to not allow creation of new X-Men characters just to spite okay. Fox? Yeah, there's two things that are on comicbookmovie.com. One of them is that Marvel is planning to cancel their Fantastic Four title before the new movie is out. And that one looks like it's going to be happening with issue Fantastic Four issue number 645. And also, there's a rumor that... Okay, apparently, Chris Claremont has revealed that... As of right now, the writers and artists aren't allowed to come up with new X-Men characters or new characters in general, maybe, after... Oh, no, no. The X department. It is X-Men characters. Uh, forbidden to create new characters because then Fox could use them in their movies. So it seems kind of petty, but that's business for you. Yeah. Well, if you're going to create a new character that's going to be awesome... If you could make their origin something that's not mutant, then Marvel could make a cool movie. If you make it mutant, then they can't do anything with it. We'll see what happens. You ladies have anything left, or are we done with the news for the day? I think we've newsed it up. <laughs> yep, I'm all newsed out. <laughs> that's all for the news today. So now for the big event. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. No, just kidding. We're talking about... It's Thursday. I think you need to check your calendar. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I might miss a day of work here. Okay. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 3. Making friends and influencing people. Wow. This might have been a, an extremely slow episode, like last year, specifically before Captain America 2 came out. Now, though, it just means so much. Everything is like, wow, this is great. And even if you're coming at it brand new, it's got to be a great experience. What do you ladies think? Well, I really enjoyed it, obviously. I mean, lots of Simmons, lots of Fitz. May's Revenge. May's Revenge. Good background. It was, I mean, so far, I'd say this season's been pretty solid. It has every single episode. And I can't claim it's gotten better and better and better. But I will say definitely 10 times better than last year, at least this point in the season. It's great. You know, the early episodes of last season are much better once you already love the characters, like a lot of shows, first seasons. Mm. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll have to go back and do a rewatch, throw some episodes out there. Like if you go back and you watch the first three episodes of Spartacus after you've seen the entire show, they're much easier to watch. Mm. I haven't done that yet because I know I can't rewatch the finale. I oh god <laughs> oh yeah yeah still getting there ladies still getting there but yeah this one okay I will admit that I ugly cried in this episode really <laughs> yeah when Fitz's reaction to seeing Ward again that was painful oh I that mean, was that brutal. was extremely painful I think everybody watching it wanted Fitz to asphyxiate ward i was almost worried that it was going to be a thing where he just like started going down and torturing ward and nobody else knew about it and it was going to be an ongoing thing like i was really worried that's where they were going yeah they shut the door on that pretty quick when colson said i saw the recording that was pretty bad colson you know everybody's saying that fitz is going to go all villainy and i can definitely see that happen but i can't imagine colson handling it any differently than he has because he's been trying to protect fitz from damaging himself further so that's why he isn't telling him stuff he's not telling him stuff because he's not telling anybody stuff because we've been talking about it he's director now he's got to compartmentalize some things not everybody can know everything he's got to keep ward around because he's given him very i mean he's got very little sources of information ward seems to be a great source of information and Haley, you brought it up before like how does he know this how does he know that how did he know the thing about donnie 
Yeah, it's how much were they telling him? Because he's not yeah. upper echelon Hydra leadership. He's Garrett's pawn. Yeah, he he was Garrett's lackey. And when somebody's in deep cover, you don't give them any everything. Which is it was kind of funny. I was watching Coulson debrief Simmons, right, and, and cooking for her and stuff. And she asked, "Well, you how mean is when it? Dad came to visit that and didn't was tell her?" So cute. <laughs> Seriously, Coulson is team Dad. May is team Mom. Every episode just further cements that. It was. It was like when your parents come to visit you at college and they didn't give you enough notice and you're like, oh, crap, I got to shove all the dirty laundry under the bed. And then when Fitz is telling him, oh, no, you're walking into a trap and Colson's like, we'll talk about this when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing, dad. <laughs> well, he wanted to assure him that he wasn't going to leave it like Fury <laughs> did with Colson. <laughs> oh, stupid, 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 stupid. And mean. Me, yeah. It's stupid. <laughs> and Fury just said, all right, all right, you've had enough. But Coulson is telling her everything of what's going on back there. I mean, she's like, well, how's Fitz? How's everybody? And he's telling her. I'm like, you don't tell people under deep cover that sort of stuff. Maybe he's doing it just because she needs to know that. Be, uh, otherwise, she'll stop functioning. I don't know. But it's bad to tell somebody that's in cover what's going on back in base. Well, he didn't give her any details, really. He just said Fitz is okay. I guess, I guess. And he did tell Fitz that Simmons was on assignment. He didn't just leave it like, I don't know where Simmons is. He said Simmons is on assignment and it's really important. So I don't know what else he can... You ladies tell me, what else could Coulson be doing with Fitz to prevent him from going all supervillain? That's the thing. I don't know. It's going to have to be something that... Fitz consciously decides to do or not to do. Yeah, like I think with Mac is of, probably helping, but yeah. I don't, it's, yeah, I don't know if there's anything they really can do. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like the Darth Vader thing, where you have all these positive influences around Anakin Skywalker, but really his own worst enemy were his own insecurities. And that's, I think, what we're going to see, or what we might see with Fitz is, his own insecurities, his anger, his bitterness at knowing what was taken away from him and knowing that there's someone out there that he can blame for it, rightly so. But if he chooses to be the person who goes one step too far and justifies that step, then that's definitely putting him on the path to be a villain. I could definitely see Head Simmons justifying it and him acting on it. Because so far, Simmons has been the voice of reason in his head and preventing him from doing anything way too stupid. I wonder if he's going to get another head character like Ward. Ooh, oh, God. That might be cool. That would be kind of interesting. Have like the literal angel and devil. Yeah. All in his head with Mac talking over it. And <laughs> wow, that, well, that would be very dramatic at some point in time. I mean, I don't think you could really overdo it, but if every now and then, like, they show up, I think that could be used pretty cool. Yeah, kind of like BSG. It wasn't overdone in BSG until the end when you found out they were aliens. Or uh, angels. Angels. Okay. Same thing. So, talking about creepy, at the beginning of this episode, when you're seeing Gemma go through her whole, I don't know, valley girl sort of life, 60s valley girl life, where she's exercising and... It reminded me of, like, the opening of Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, what was that song they were playing? Like she's It's called God girl. Help the Girl. Yeah. And just when she gets into the elevator, I can't remember the line, but I saw it in closed captioning, and I'll have to go back and see what it was. It was very fitting for that particular moment. And then she gets up there, and she's talking to her supervisor, and then the supervisor goes off, and then you see the Hydra symbol, and you're like, oh, crap. They did that very well. All I'm thinking is, black lab coats, really? That's got to be so hard to clean. <laughs> We use white lab coats because you could just throw some bleach in there if you get stuff on it and then, you know, just forget about it. But just keeping it that pristine black color. I mean, you spill stuff just constantly in labs, okay? I Definitely. can't tell you how many pairs of jeans that I've bleached, like, just cleaning off my work area. Well, the black ones show the Ebola contamination better. They're single-use jackets. They burn them when they're done. <laughs> they are an evil empire all by the way so you know they don't care about wasting resources that's true <laughs> no they won't whitehall is hypnotizing agent 33 throughout the entire thing and it's just really freaky compliance will be rewarded it's what we've heard now for like two episodes it's like uh 
So now we found out a little bit more about what we were wondering about last episode, and it is horrifying. It's very horrifying. Agent 33 fought it for as long as she could. She was even trying to escape, and all she could do was get her arm down, and she couldn't do anything else, and he just walked over and put the arm right back up, and you could see she's fighting. She's really trying to fight it, and she can't. It's like, I don't think she's weak. I think that this is just overpowering. He's got it down pat. He's had all this time to perfect it. He's really good at it, and Donnie, poor Donnie Gill, the kid never had a chance. He didn't have a chance at the academy he didn't have a chance at the what is it the sandbox that he was at he, yeah and he did definitely didn't have a chance on the ship i mean the poor kid's just trying to be normal and he there's nothing normal about him yeah that just the more you think about his circumstances and just how everything went to hell the sadder it is and then did you guys forget that the team didn't know he had special powers because i did I remembered when they said, wait a minute, what? And then I was like, oh, yeah, it was at the end of the episode that... When he frosted the window, but then he went off to the sandbox, so you figure she would have figured it out. But you're right, the team probably didn't know about it. Yeah. They say that Gil helped them take the sandbox. So somebody, yeah, somebody in presumably Hydra now, well, obviously Hydra, since he was brainwashed and everything, knew about him and got to him while he was in there and... Which makes you wonder, how how exactly did he break free of his brainwashing? I think that when Hydra came in, stuff just fell apart and you could escape. But good question. I mean, if he's brainwashed the entire time, I think he wasn't... Uh, there's got to be a time limit on it. Like, they mentioned that it was an earlier process and that it didn't hold. And then Whitehall said, well, it held enough and we were able to get him back. So I guess what they're doing now is even worse. And it's so scary because Simmons is right there and they're saying, well, if she's not going to work with us, we'll make her comply. I'm like, oh, not my poor science, baby. There we go. I was waiting for it. Yes, definitely. Poor science, baby. Simmons. Well, and Simmons can't lie, but she's doing pretty well. And I think her reason for being part of S.H.I.E.L.D. has got to be cemented. Otherwise, she wouldn't be there. Maybe it's because of what they did to Fitz. I think at this point, it is definitely what they did to Fitz, what they did to the rest of her team personally. Just, you know, I think it's more personal than abstract now. Right, right. Like, especially when she asks, you know, how's everyone? And Coulson tells her Fitz is fine. You kind of see it in her face that she's still really upset about that and not being there with him. So, Haley, when Sky brought up family in the interrogation award and they brought up the brother and the parents, did you key in on that at all? Yeah, they said that his family is respected and loved, and that's obviously not how he feels about it. (laughs) Ward says every family has its secrets, so we'll see what that means. And he also, Ward was just, I mean, he's constantly creepy, and he plays it very well. (laughs) While a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent is considering right or wrong, Hydra has already taken the shot. That's why Hydra will win. Which you see later in the episode when Sky shoots Gil. Right. Because she's, and, she's taken that you know, yeah. under consideration. She's like, no, I, I have to act like Hydra because I want to win. Yes. And it's another one of those ah, people, you know, having to do morally weird things and another person that I'm worried for now. And by the way, I was talking about it with my husband while we were watching this episode. So far, this season is the most that I've liked Sky. You know, basically since since Shield fell is just the best Sky has worked for me. I found her kind of annoying at first, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, and, she was a little too naive. Yeah, and now that she's like hardcore Sky, just yeah, go for it. She's awesome. I mean, when Scott brought up that it is probably going to come back to bite her because he thinks that she's a little bit too cold right now trying to overcompensate a little too much on that side that's probably true yeah it is probably true i mean we see it at the end where she can't handle the thing about her dad her heart rate skyrockets goes to 105 and and skyrockets where her heart rate really hadn't gotten above like 75 before so it really that's when she was jumping out of an airplane i know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for the first time. Uh, where yeah, was- I can tell you, my heart rate would not be 75 jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> where was Lola? Come on. Lola wasn't even on the back of the thing. Lola's- I think Lola's still in the shop. <laughs> she had a rough year last year. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, give her time. Give her time. 
Man, you know, get back to Ward. I got to say this. I wrote a note down here. I said, Ward is a messed up bucket of vomit on a roller coaster. <laughs> That's what I put down. <laughs> it's my one moment of creativity. I got a question for you, ladies, since you're more versed in the comics than I am. Maribel Del Mar, does that mean anything? Does that have any meaning in the comics? That was the ship name, by the way. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Uh, no. All right. Well, if anybody out Not there seen knows it. if that's a tip of the hat to something, and we've seen a lot of that. We talked about it with the license plate numbers a couple episodes ago. If Maribel Del Mar means anything to the comics, please let us know. We'd love to know. Haley, what was your favorite part of the episode? At the end, you know, May has shot <laughs> Lance Hunter, <laughs> and he says, are we even now or something along those lines? And she says, we are. And then Trip gives him a look. <laughs> and that was fantastic. <laughs> and Sky was shot too, wasn't she? Yep. And she's learning how to savor it. <laughs> yep. It's true. Uh, also, but that also played off at the beginning of the episode when she said, don't be sorry, just wait. That was probably my favorite part. <laughs> really? That was your favorite part? Because I was going to ask uh, don't you next. Be, don't be sorry, just wait. Uh-huh. That's, well, at least that was my favorite line. Okay. I enjoyed the part where May said, you know, if we're going to take her out, we should replace the glass. I'm like, yeah, I wonder <laughs> if they're going to put shield logos on the new glass. <laughs> we're talking about the conference room in the bus with all the glass that had been shot out. When the guys walk in while May is going to get the big gun for Sky, and Sky says, speaking of not puny, and May thinks she's still talking about the gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it was Mac and Lance that were walking up. Yeah. yeah. Lance Hunter. Oh, speaking of misunderstandings, when Coulson asks Simmons if she's made any friends, and she's like, well, no, it's a little lonely. <laughs> Just, oh, science baby. <laughs> and he explained it to her, and I think she learned at that point in time. And yes, she did, but... But she was still, no, Dad, I haven't made any friends yet, but I will. <laughs> Thank you for worrying about me. <laughs> And he's like, that wasn't what I meant at all. <laughs> she was trying to get her boss to go out to drinks and then the security guys. And he's like, what did you do? And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure everything will be fine. I'm like, no, no, it's not going to be fine. It's never going to be fine. Well, she, yet, got, she got what she wanted. It gets scarier when it goes up, but she wanted to go up. So there you go. Yeah, just from sheer emotion and just, I think, how wonderfully acted it was. Fitz seeing Ward again. That was probably my most favorite part of the episode was when Fitz just lost it over Ward. Also, I called it. He uh, justified himself by saying that he gave him a fighting chance. Yeah, I, I thought of that when he started explaining himself. And when you go back to that episode, I'm remembering it in my mind right now. I think he did it just to get it done with, right? He It wasn't to give them a fighting chance. It was, they were in the pod, let's get rid of the pod, so therefore I get rid of them. They're going to be in the middle of the ocean. Nobody's going to come to rescue them. That's what his mindset was at the time. It wasn't, oh, this will give them a fighting chance. It was, I need to get rid of these two, and this is the way to do it. That's in my mind, anyway. I don't think we've seen the last of Donnie. I think that's pretty obvious. We're Agreed. definitely going to see Donnie again. Also... Thinking about all the other kids from the Academy, we still have to go through that, too. I mean, they're out there somewhere. There's a lot of Academy kids that we met last year, actually, and I definitely think we're going to run into them again. Well, and we know Hydra took the Academy. Right. Well, the Science Academy, at least. Right. Whitehall made an interesting comment at the end. Do we know who is in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Therefore, Hydra doesn't know what they're up against. They don't know they're up against Coulson. That's interesting. Well, yeah, I was thinking about it in my second viewing, and I was trying to think, who knows that Coulson's alive? They've kept that pretty secret and under wraps. But hasn't he been doing most of the recruiting personally? Yes, that's true. He's out there. So you would, if there was an agent that was already on the other side, they would get that back to him. Hmm. Haley for the win. Found a hole. Well, and Garrett knew that Coulson was alive. Right, but they don't know. Uh, they might not know Coulson's in charge. Yeah, true. Uh, is it just me or has Trip been completely underutilized? Well, it's because he's stuck flying the bus now. <laughs> well, wasn't he in the conference room of the bus while the operation was going on on the ship? Yeah, he was. So the bus was just on autopilot or something? I wonder where they found the jet fuel. 
Um, uh, when they stole knock the, over a hydro base, <laughs> they were siphoning it out of the tanks at the Air Force Base. Yeah. They cut that scene. <laughs> okay. Do you ladies have anything else about the episode? I love the preview for next week, and I'm so looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the Fitz Mac relationship. I mean, I'm legitimately looking forward to that because Mac is both extremely understanding and yet no nonsense. He's like. <laughs> Oh, by the way, that was a great cut from the actual guns to Mac with Left for Dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he's playing the video game? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good. He's like, oh, Koenig, uh, he really hates the sevens, the European sevens with the line through it. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst. So, if you're ever around Agent Koenig, if you want your lanyard, don't put the, the whole the line, line through the, the sevens. Seven. No, don't do it. All right. You guys have any predictions for the future that you want to tell everybody about? I will be delighted by next week's episode. <laughs> Haley, you got really anything? going out on a limb there. <laughs> yep. It's how we roll. I really do think that we're going to end up with the angel and devil on Fitz's shoulders. Uh huh. I'm sticking to that one. You're gonna stick to that one. Okay. I am going to say our mid-season finale, and the network owner Stephen really loves that term. So say it over and over again. The <laughs> mid-season finale is going to be Sky meeting her dad. So I'm gonna go out on a limb with that one. I can see that. Yep. All right. Are we out? I think we're out. All right. Join us next week as we talk the next episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 4, I Will Face My Enemy. And remember, we love feedback. Haley was right about that at the beginning. Go to our website, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. You'll find all the great ways to contact us in the top right-hand corner. And don't forget, we have a voicemail line, which was used this week. Thank you guys very much. 844-THE-BUS-1 or 844-843-2871. We have a Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. Just search for it. You will find us. And don't forget, we have forms on the GuinnessGeek.com network. You can go to the your mobile device, Tapatalk app, and search for Guinea Geek, all one word, and you will find where we are. So go ahead, do that, and we will have conversations there. Don't forget, we have a lot of questions for you out there. I'm going to ask you one right now. What is your science of Marvel questions? We'll get back to you on the whole wide. Donnie, Sank, and thank you very much to all of our listeners. It is fantastic getting the feedback from you. Uh, yeah, I want to especially thank all the Twitter feedback people, Andy, Jay, Op, Suncast, Mr. Paracletes, and especially a little too clinical for agreeing that my jab at SP over there was fantastic. (laughs) I'd like to thank all the people that called in. Operator, I mean, wow. You really gave our phone line a workout this week, and we appreciate that. Jesse, Adam, thank you for being a regular caller. And Jay. And thank you very much to Grego the Van Gosian on our forum. We really appreciate your feedback there. Willie, we'll get you your shirt. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for the Facebook love. And Jonathan, thank you for the Facebook love as well. We really want to hear back from you. So as you can tell, you can hit us up at all those places and we will get back to you. So until next week, I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Later. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you'll find all of our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual host and do not represent Legends, Stream, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. No infringement is intended.